something's not adding up. It's, it's like there's multiple issues. I talk to the customer. I come to the conclusion, just send us everything. The unit the customer is trying to modify to run an extruder press would push aluminum go through a big cylinder. So the first step, we ran it, checked the pump because if he's been running the pump, no pressure, it couldn't be destroyed. The pump was perfectly fine. So there was no damage done to the pump. They also had a return line filter on the inlet to the pump. Normally it would destroy the pump. But this pump is electronically controlled. It was like the car, it was in neutral. So the pump never did get a command to come out of neutral, so it didn't self-destruct. He got lucky. So we want to check everything out. We want to check out the valves. And I was just explaining to Damien, he went to take the valves off and he specifically asked me, do I mark which way the valves are on? I go, no, it doesn't matter because we'll put them on either way. We don't need to mark it. Well, he marked it anyways. And is that a good thing? Yes, I come over to explain. This is the pressure poured in. If we look at the valve, he only took one valve off. Okay. P's coming into A. So that's not good. We look further into the valve and the valve is actually not configured correctly. It needs an internal drain and it's external. So we're finding More multiple... Yeah. We're going to, we have the pump, the pump's tested, the pump works fine. We're going to check his electronic card to see how the configuration is. I'm suspecting he doesn't have it configured correctly. So this is the pump that's off the unit. It's variable pressure control and variable displacement control. What kind of pump is it? It's a PV plus. So we used our controller first to confirm the pump is good. Mm -hmm. Now we've put his controller no, in. Going to. Going to yep. put it in. Let's make sure that it's functioned and configured correctly. So right now we tested the pump uh, with our own driver card and control and it worked perfectly with our configuration. Now we're going to install customer driver card and see how it's going to respond with the pump. So we know the pump is working good with our control. We're going to see if there's something wrong with his control. The big thing when we have a situation like this is when you find one thing, never assume that that's the only thing wrong. We, we need to check every last thing. Once we send it back, we will know that this stuff is 100%. If there's a problem, we don't have to look at that because we've looked at it thoroughly. Sometimes it's the only way to help a customer is to have them send it up. Eliminate the questionables. Yeah. You send it back, I expect he's still going to have trouble, but at least now we know where we're at. Yeah. You like, it's used like a brain, uh, which sends signals to do. So when we give one signal here, we'll decide how much signal it should give to the pump control to do. And I'm expecting there's either setup issues or he doesn't have a wire. Right? Single wire gone wrong in here could mess up that way. Uh, gear pump. Parker? Yeah. Why is it all together like that? Is that normal? Uh, there's actually going to be another section. Okay. He builds them up from scratch. Gotcha. Okay. Parker sends us the drawing and we build them. Okay. So they're going to be in there. The trouble is this one has four. It's going to have four suctions mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. And We've only done four suctions one other time. When it comes to testing, we need to attach four suction lines. So we got the four lines here that we can attach, mm -hmm. but we need the fittings. We have two small ones that will go here, but we only have one that will go here. Okay. So we're building the fourth one. We went through finding all the uh, fittings and all the little bits that we needed. So, and he's currently a silver. So there's the ones that we need. We got the four going into the pump. These are the suctions, these are the discharges. These are the ones that are going to attach to it so that we can attach those small hoses. Mm -hmm. but we've only got one of these, so we need another one to fit that. Because when we test Russell's pump, we'll have the, another second one like that going from this inch and a quarter GIC uh, female 
to the suction hose. This is a PV180. So you're actually going to want to look inside. And I'll just do a little quick. So it shows how it strokes. Now if you want to get the shaft in or out on this particular model, put it so the key's up. You can't get it in because it's jamming on the cradle. This is a port for the compensator that leads into the back of the servo piston. So you're actually forcing it ahead against the bias spring so the cradle rocks out of the way so that this will fall in. I'll just block it so you don't get wet. Now it's in. But now it will not come out. You gotta keep playing with it. Rotates completely free. It's just the cradle tends to get in the way and it's just a really easy way of doing it. It's just force the pump to stroke with air. It's a 50 millimeter shaft, so the key is designed to take the torque of the shaft. I fought with it for a few minutes and then I thought, I wonder if air will work and I've been doing that for a while. But I put it back together and now I know it strokes, so when I go on and put it on the test bench, I don't have to worry about it. Right? There's nothing binding, it's completely free. It's stroked with like 130 PSI of air. So we had the direction valve that was on backwards, but we also dive a little deeper. Damien checked the model code and informed me it was externally drained, which there is no external drain on the manifold. So we went through it and inside here was a small plug which makes it internally drained. So by removing the plug, it will now drain to the tank plug. With that little plug in there, this big valve would not shift. It's still over. It's still over? we're gonna see how the air control is going to do on the pump. So what do you hook up like from this to the pump? Like is there just one connection or a lot of things you have to like set up? Uh, a lot of things. A lot of things? If you come over here. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> oh. All that connections, yeah. So this one's going to the computer and all that connections. So commands, sensors, computer, power? Yeah. There you go. Yep. We're putting the last, uh, calling it tier on? <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah. Got, uh, so are those just like bolted together? They look like... Yes, they are. Oh, okay. They look yeah. like very well. We have uh, three sections of PGP 517. And then the last section will be a PGP 511. And why is this so difficult to test? Each section is uh, separate from each other. There's no common inlets. So The stuff I, going in this one is not going to go in this one to this one. Correct. They're individual. Yeah, e each section is individual. The oil will not flow between sections in this particular case. So they're all going to be hooked up within each individual oil liner. Yes, each one will have its own oil uh, supply line. It makes yeah. it slightly challenging for us because we only have four supply lines. Yes, and yes. you have to make one smaller. Yes. We're, we don't do this kind of, we don't use all the supply lines very often. Okay. So we don't necessarily have all the fittings made up for that. So these are rare, essentially? Yes. Okay. Yes. These are all connected. So okay. the motor of sorts that's driving the first section will also be driving the second, third, and fourth section. So they're individual, but they're not. <laughs> they're all driven at the same time, but they're all supplied. The, the oil supply is individual. Separate. Yeah. All I have to do now is uh, that piece of device there. What? I'm still working on. That's why I asked if they were connected because they look so like glued on arm. Yeah, internally they are connected. Uh, I assume this these. bolt here is as long as all of it? Yes. And then it's, yeah. So they're putting the other one on the top of it? That's what I said. I can't believe that we're making it even taller. Oh, so that's, <laughs> uh, I, I got that wrong. Off a little. I smell like acetone. 
Oh, that's the our, our new brake cleaner. Oh, Adele's favorite scent? Not really. <laughs> it smells no. like nail polish it remover. Does. That's what other people have said as I well. I actually like the smell of brake clean. See, so there, how would I know? It, this has a lot more alcohol in it. <laughs> I don't know how heavy this one is, but it won't be as heavy as the cast iron ones. Mostly aluminum. <laughs> oh yeah, not bad. So, since we were saying yesterday, this is our driver cut, so we were going to try it with the customer driver cut on that pump. Ah. So, I installed the driver cut for customers. Uh, he was saying he has some problems which we don't know. Now, since we got it installed, we can see some weird lightings going on there which we had never seen. See, it's flashing all around. Oh. This one's, it's not supposed to do that. So, it looks like it's being damaged, but it looks like we need a new driver cut. So, we supplied a new driver cut, we tested it. We make sure it was working fine here before we shipped it. Yep. We have the video and then we shipped it to customer. Now we, now he sent it back saying something's wrong with the system or the pump. Yep. Now we check his driver cut, seems to be not working. Do we have these in stock? You should, yeah. <laughs>